start connecting together to maybe what have seemed to be almost different topics in this class so far. But don't worry, the class is young yet. So what we've kind of done is introduce statistics as this one thing where we have vectors of data uh, stored in a data frame, and we calculate, say, a function on those data, like the mean, where we add up all the numbers and divide by however many there are, or we calculate the median. Well, really, we let R do it, but okay. We calculate the median where we sort all the numbers and pick out the one in the middle sort of thing. So we've kind of done that for statistics, and we've made a bunch of plots. What we're going to do in this video is connect the two together by recapping our definitions of population and sample. And then we're going to introduce a few new words in this class. The first is going to be a distribution. And it turns out there's many of these things. They're just kind of like a, an abstract concept. And then we're going to show how statistics and parameters are really tying together this connection between plots and statistics for us. So let's just dive in and I'll try not to, you know, wax philosophical, they say. So here we go. Here's our brief recap. In this class, we have a population, which is a big, broad group of nouns that we would like to make statements about. But generally, it's too difficult, too time consuming, too expensive to go collect all the things in the population. So instead, what we do is take a random sample by randomly sampling, oops, I don't want to draw with that, by randomly sampling from the population just a subset of the population to obtain a sample. Once we have this sample, we then calculate statistics like the mean or the median on the sample. Okay, so what we have here is a big group of things that we're interested in, the population, and a subset, hopefully randomly sampled from the population that we call a sample. So the sample is the small group, and that's usually the data sets we have and we work with, and the population is the big group, where hopefully the sample looks like, in the important ways, the population, even if it is just a subset. So we've been looking at a bunch of plots so far, like if we are considering chickens' weights, we've looked at density plots and histograms. And for both, for the numeric variable weight in the data set chick weights, what we've seen is a skewed right density plot or a skewed right histogram. And what that skew is actually defining for us is it's telling us what the population of chickens who received Theoretically, these four diets, go back to the, diet, the data set chick weights to remind yourself what the diets are. What we're essentially doing is with the sample where we made this density plot, we are using it as an estimate of what the population itself looks like. So theoretically, there's this very nice mathematical description of what the population of weights for all chickens that theoretically might receive the diets one through four. Even though we can't see or touch or collect all those chickens and give them one of those four diets, we abstractly know that there are chickens out there that we don't have in our sample, and we know that we could give those chickens these diets. So this population side here is saying, what would the density plot for all of those chickens look like? Well, the hope is that it would look something like what our sample density plot is. That is, and here's the main point again, the sample is estimating the population. And the shape of the density plot or histogram is really estimating the distribution of the population. So here is our first definition for the day.
the distribution is the population side shape of whatever variable or variables it is we are interested in. So theoretically in this example, because our sample was right skewed, the population distribution for chickens weights that might receive diets one through four is also right skewed. They don't have to be identically right skewed. Maybe the sample just by pure chance was really right skewed, but the population is just slightly right skewed. That's possible just because the sample is, although we hope a good representation of the population, it is an imperfect representation of the population. So a distribution really describes the shape of the population variables of interest. Now the shape could be right skewed, left skewed, uh, not skewed at all, symmetric. It could be flat. So let's just draw all these out. The population distribution could look right skewed like we have for chicken's weight, left skewed like I just drew. It could be not skewed at all and just have a single, I don't know, hump or it could be just completely flat, like the probability that for all the outcomes of whatever the variable is are all equal. Oh, here's a good example. Think dice. If you're rolling a die, it has the same probability as a one, as a six, as a three. So there's no difference in the height of these curves for the different outcomes on a die. Okay, so that was pretty good. Let me clean this one up and get back to our chicken weights diet. Uh, example, now that we kind of have an understanding of the distribution, just being the shape of the population, really just think what type of skew does it have. Okay, so with a sample, what we end up doing is calculating some sample mean. And I say sample mean here because when you calculate the mean from a data set, you are really only ever calculating the mean from a sample of things taken from the population. In statistics, we never have the population. We only have samples. Let me say that again, because that one's important. In the world of statistics, we only ever have data sets that are subsets of the population. We only ever have samples. So anytime we calculate a mean, where we add up all the numbers and divide by however many there are, we're really calculating a sample mean. Now let's call our sample mean x bar. That is x with a bar over the top. That's just the common notation for the sample mean. So if we were looking at chickens weights and we calculated the sample mean, maybe we got x bar, the mean, let's draw all that a little bit cleaner. Maybe we got the sample weight to be that number right there. Just the same as the density plot is estimating the population distribution, the sample mean is estimating the population parameter. Specifically, the population mean. Okay, so there was my specific example of um, sample statistic over here, the sample mean is a statistic, and mu, that is the Greek letter mu, is the population mean. The sample mean estimates the population mean. That is the general idea of statistics. We are going to calculate statistics on the sample that are going to estimate population parameters. Okay, so let's write that down. Statistic. A statistic is any function of the sample data. So the mean calculated on the sample is a statistic. It's specifically the sample mean, the statistic. And what we're doing is using that to estimate parameters. So theoretically, these chickens 
in the population, all the chickens there are, including the ones we do not have in our sample, they theoretically all have a mean. We call the mean of all the chickens, even the ones that are not in our sample, we call that mean the population mean. It is a specific characteristic of the population mean. It is the average weight for all the chickens that might receive the four diets in this data set. The sample mean is attempting to make a good guess at the population mean. The sample mean is attempting to make a good guess of the population mean. Okay, so the idea is we have a population of interest, we randomly sample from it, and from the sample, we calculate a sample statistic, like the mean. The function is add up all the data and divide by however many there are. That sample mean, x bar, is estimating the population mean, mu. But the same story goes for any of the other statistics we've looked at. There is a sample median where you sort all your data and pick out the one in the middle. That sample median is estimating a population median, where the population median is exactly the number that splits half the data less than that number and half the data greater than that number. So the only real difference between the sample and the population is the group to which the function is applied. If you're applying the function to the finite sample, then it is a sample statistic. And whatever number you get is estimating the population equivalent of that function. Okay, let's try one more example. There is a sample standard deviation to tell you approximately how wide your data set is. That sample standard deviation is estimating the population distributions parameter, the population standard deviation. It describes how wide the population distribution is. The wider the population distribution, the bigger the population standard deviation. And theoretically, if you have a big population standard deviation, when you sample a bunch of data from that population, that wideness of the population distribution will show up in your sample, and so your sample standard deviation will be bigger. Okay, same story for the interquartile range. It describes a similar, similar though slightly different, description of the width of the population distribution. The interquartile range tells you the size of the middle 50% of the data. And what you're trying to do from your sample interquartile range is estimate how wide the middle 50% of the data is. Okay, I encourage you specifically with this video to watch it a few times and really try to wrap your head around these two sides of this issue, that there's a sample side with a subset of the population's data from which we calculate numbers that are estimating these unknown population parameters. But just because the population parameters are unknown does not mean they don't exist. What we have to do is wrap our head around the fact that there are characteristics of the population that we don't know, but we want to estimate those characteristics using a subset of the data. There exists population parameters, even though we don't know what values they are. There is an average height of all US adults, even if we don't know what it is. But we could guess what the average height of all US adults is by taking everybody in the class's height and adding up all our heights and dividing by however many there are. It would not be the population parameter, but it would be a pretty good guess of it. So again, I encourage you to watch this video a few times. I encourage you strongly to show up into office hours and try to walk me through an example that you would like to put in your course notes to describe everything that we just talked about in this video. Try to give yourself an example with a new data set 
where you use the words population, sample, statistic, and parameter. Walk yourself through an example using these new words and then come to office hours and have me look through it so that I can help you kind of wrap your head around where your understanding of these topics are. This is the core concept of the class. So I strongly encourage you in some way, try to get feedback from me on these topics. It could be through office hours. It could be through Piazza. I don't think email is a good strategy for this. So let's try to do it through a little bit more open communication channel where we have a little bit easier uh, means of expressing these ideas. Please do spend some time with this video and please do try to get immediate feedback for me from me about an example you create for yourself to put in your course notes about how plots and statistics are really tied together based around the idea of a population and a sample and the sample estimating population characteristics.